Welcome to this session and lecture on gender and diversity issues in STEM communication. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics. Generally, when we discuss or learn strategies related to communication, we focus on issues related to content, language, structure, organization and so on. We do not normally think of including issues related to gender and diversity as part of our communication strategies. However, one overarching theme in communication is that we should ensure absolute clarity and we should avoid as much as possible any kind of vagueness and ambiguity. Hence, from this perspective, it is very important that we incorporate issues related to gender and diversity in communication. As we shall see, these are not simply issues of uh, political correctness, but they actually help us to make communication more inclusive and enhance people who are either reading or listening to your research to understand them better. Let us begin by trying to understand what is meant by STEM. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics. Now, we all know how relevant these are in education, in teaching strategies or pedagogy and communication. In modern societies, we also know that these disciplines play a very important role in many different ways. What we should ensure, however, is that the benefits of these disciplines should percolate down to everyone, including those who may be marginalized and excluded from learning these subjects and who perhaps need the knowledge and outcomes the most. So, we need to think and reflect about how we teach, learn and research the STEM subjects. We also need to think about how gender and diversity issues matter for STEM communication. The reason we are talking of incorporating gender and diversity issues into STEM communication is that for a very long time in the history of human beings, STEM was the preserve of western male, middle or upper class urban scholars and teachers. What we have been trying for several decades and what uh, still needs more attention is to open up STEM to non-western, other gender, rural, poor and minority groups, so that they can also benefit through enhanced innovations. So, it is believed and a lot of research has shown that the more diversity there is in STEM fields, the greater the possibility of innovations and hence the greater the benefits of STEM in more fields for a larger pool of people. There is also considerable discussion about crisis in STEM across the world that despite many decades if not centuries of innovation, discovery and inventions, not only are STEM research not percolating down to everyone who needs to benefit from them. There is also a feeling that there is some kind of a crisis in STEM in the sense that not enough human resources are available to enhance the quantity and quality of research in these disciplines and not enough people are attracted to careers in STEM. From all of these perspectives, it is very important that communication issues in STEM incorporate gender and diversity issues. What is unique and different about the STEM approach is that it does not simply look at these disciplines in silos as separate disciplines, but looks at them in more integrated perspective. Also, these disciplines in the STEM approach are approached using a transdisciplinary perspective, which means that the methodologies, theories and concepts in the individual disciplines are combined to come up with new and more holistic approaches, concepts, theories and methodologies, so that we can make sense of the world in a much more holistic manner. We all generally assume that we know what science, technology and engineering and mathematics means, but from an integrative transdisciplinary approach, we need to be more clear about what these mean, so that they can then help us to communicate better. So, science is basically about gathering more knowledge about nature, how nature works, how various phenomena and processes in nature can be understood. Technology primarily relates to modification of the environment 
transformation of the environment and innovating using environmental resources for the benefit of human beings. Engineering on the other hand is design under constraints. That is, there are a lot of constraints related to resources, to finances, to costs, human needs, uh, limitations of technology, policies, regulation and so on. And therefore, engineering needs to design solutions for human beings keeping in mind these various constraints. Mathematics is the study of trends and patterns particularly with reference to numbers. So, we need to know how each of these sets of disciplines can be taught in the classroom, how do we do research in these disciplines and how do we communicate both in terms of teaching and research, so that these have a larger use for society and the world at large. Increasingly, businesses, educational institutions, research institutions are becoming more and more aware of how addressing gender and diversity issues in STEM communication help us to not only communicate better, but to achieve better results both in the workplace and in teaching and research communication. Before we move ahead, we need to have a basic understanding of what is meant by gender and diversity issues, where we are essentially referring to problematized relations between men and women of different backgrounds. We know that in society, there is a large amount of inequality and discrimination based on social and cultural backgrounds. Modern society, however, is premised upon the belief that every individual is of equal worth. Hence, gender and diversity issues pertain to the structural way of seeing the relation between different groups and between men and women. It involves developing a certain consciousness, so that we do not unconsciously carry forward the biases, the discrimination, the prejudices that prevail in society into our communication in the different STEM disciplines. Now, we know that all modern institutions are not equal in giving attention to the interests of men and women and of people belonging to different groups. It is therefore, up to us as professional academics to ensure that we are as far as possible aware of these inequalities and where needed, we are neutral in terms of these differences, so that we do not bring in these inequalities into our own research processes, into our communication. So, the kind of questions that are asked could be about how a society that is averse to diversity or a society that is sexist, how do they structure science and society? How do they shape modern sciences pattern of knowledge and their patterns of ignorance? Generally, we believe that science is above these kinds of discriminations, prejudices, biases and so on, but both consciously and unconsciously these percolate into our communication, research and teaching strategies. So, if we are to increase the democratic effects of research projects, so that they benefit more and they are not exclusive or marginalizing, we need to incorporate social sensitivity and diversity awareness into our research communication. So, this module helps all of us to better our communication, to be more effective in our communication and in many ways, they also offer professional and growth opportunities. Because several organizations, several studies both in India and abroad have shown that lack of effective communication abilities constitutes a key barrier to placement of highly skilled and educated academic professionals. So, it is possible that some of these communication problems are not just related to language, but these are also related to how we communicate in a world, in a globalized world, where diversity including gender diversity is the norm rather than the exception. Let us just do a couple of exercises. This exercise is termed as I want you to know and this exercise is best done by dividing yourselves into groups. So, if you are an individual who is listening to this lecture, uh, perhaps you should consider forming yourselves into groups before doing this exercise. You could do it in your classrooms with friends or in work settings. So, you can divide yourselves into groups of 3 or 4, 
based on language, ethnicity, region, age or gender, give yourselves or the group the following instructions. Give them 10 minutes to write down and discuss answers to the following questions. What we want you to know about our group and secondly, what we never want to see, hear or experience again as a member of this group. Many of you will be surprised at the kind of responses that you get because in general we believe that either we ourselves are not biased or discriminatory or that these issues are issues of the past and do not prevail and do not affect learning processes in the present. The responses that you will get will sensitize you better to the kind of problems that exist in society and which affect learning in the classroom or in the workplace. So, once you do this exercise, you can think of the initial reactions to this kind of activity. Try to reflect on which group you learnt about the most, something that surprised you, something that you did not expect and also whether there were any similarities between the different kinds of groups. This is an initial sensitizing kind of activity which helps us to enhance our communication. These are a set of further resources especially for STEM disciplines, but for a variety of academic professionals which will help us to address gender and sensitivity issues in communication. With this we come to the end of this module, thank you.